Hey there, it's Jen, and I'm back with a, another video for my guest design spot at Altenew. Today I'm going to be focusing on this washi tape, which is glorious and beautiful and humongous. It is six and a half inches. You could easily cover an entire background of a 12 by 12 page with two pieces of this. Um, but I'm going to kind of play around with some different ideas that I have with it. And then I'm also going to use some of the watercolor brush markers, I'm thinking, um, in coordinating colors. And then I have some inks in coordinating colors because I want to stamp out my title um, to match the uh, washi tape. And so I'm going to actually start with my title and then kind of go from there, but I'm going to put it all on this uh, Vicki Booten mixed media paper, which is just a smooth cardstock. It's more heavyweight. I'm not going to be doing a lot of watercolor on here, so I don't want to use watercolor paper, um, but I'm just going to uh, put a little bit on, so this will work out just fine. So with that in mind, I'm going to scrapbook this photo of me and some crafty friends. Uh, this was at the Nashville Scrap Gals Retreat, and I got some ink on there, so we'll see what I gotta do about that. Um, but I just wanted to talk about meeting these guys in real life. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with my title using the block alpha, and this time I'm just going to use the solid letter. I'm not going to use the shadow. And I start out with some scrap paper because I figured there's lots of open white spaces here that I could stamp the letters in and that would be really nice, which would have been a great idea if I had planned on stamping these with just one color, but I wanted to make an ombre effect kind of on my letters, and it made it a lot easier on me to line them up, and you'll see that here in just a second, but if you are not doing that, I think this is a great way to use up those leftover little bits of uh, cardstock that you have, especially if you're gonna fussy cut them out like I am here. So I'm starting with a little bit of, well, I'm stamping them all or I'm inking them all up with this spiced marmalade ink. It's kind of a light orange peachy color. And then I'm going to wipe that off and then I'm going to add some pink ink and I'm doing abandoned coral. And I'm doing that a little more than halfway up each letter. And the reason it works easier to do it in a line is because you don't have to twist your ink pad and worry about getting it on other letters and I actually didn't line this up quite right. Uh, I didn't push it back up into the corner before I stamped it again and so it just didn't line up right and it didn't work well but I figured while I had it here I would go ahead and finish it and just see if I liked the coloring once I stamped them all out and so I finished that and then I kind of decide well that didn't line up so now I'm going to just get a piece of uh, paper and do them all lined up and it was so so much easier so here you can see me I lined them all up and now it's really easy to ink them all at once and I liked that so much more so uh, just using the same three colors there and I'm going to fussy cut these out they're mostly straight lines so it's really not very hard and I love fussy cutting so it's not a big deal so the title says not just online and I kind of want to make this layout about how uh, these are my friends and we're not just online anymore. We met each other in real life. And I'm just taking some scraps that I have and kind of layering them up behind my photos. Um, these are just random scraps from other layouts that I have created. And you can see off to the side there that I've put that washi tape on some white cardstock. And it's just sitting there waiting for me to use it on this page. I'm excited about it. And I used, uh, I'm basing my whole color scheme off of the washi tape because it's so gorgeous and, and it's going to be kind of a focus and feature of this layout. So I have some vellum and some random scraps and they're kind of ripped and I really like the way that looks. And I'm going to go ahead and get my photo stuck down and get some of these layers built up and creating kind of a little shelf. And I'm trying to figure out where I might put my title. I couldn't figure out if I wanted to put it above my photos or below my photos or on top of my photo somehow. Um, but I'm gonna play around with it quite a lot before I make a decision. And I also have these little word strips that I was thinking about using that have, that have just been sitting in my scraps too. And I'm not super thrilled with the way those look, so I think I'm looking for something else right now. If I don't come back in a second, I will skip through this part. 
All right, so I apparently didn't come back. So here I am now, I'm testing out some colors with those uh, brush markers and basically I'm just coloring them on top of a circle uh, stamping block and then I am spritzing some water on and stamping that down. So I'm trying to see which colors that I like together. I really love that orangey sunsetty color and the purple and pink together. I think it's just pretty. And that's kind of the the colors that I'm using here on the on the layout. And so I'm just kind of I don't know, I'm just playing around just trying to see what kinds of looks I can get. And then what I'm going to end up doing is after I play with these different colors, I'm going to punch some hearts out of them. And so I'm just adding the colors, spritzing it. Look how pretty that is when I just kind of, after I spritzed it, just kind of let it, let the water like move the color around. I think it looks really pretty. There's a little bit too much water on there, so I sopped some of it up. But I'm going to use my heat gun and kind of dry it because I'm impatient and I want to use that. So I'm just using my uh, Ranger Craft gun there to heat that up. And it has such a pretty finish. Look at that. I love it. So I'm going to do another little bit here with more orange in it and just a little bit of pink and a little bit of purple, but mostly orange because I needed some more of that color. And then I'm going to do one that's mostly purple and I will punch hearts out of these. So I added more pink on the purple one because the purple is a little too purpley, but just having fun kind of playing with those and it works really well on watercolor paper if you just scribble a little bit with the watercolor brush marker and then grab a water brush and kind of spread it around or even just to spray like spray some water onto it. So after I get those done I've got my punches out. I'm thinking circles at first and I like the way that that it's the circle looks and so I'm going to I'm thinking about it but I'm going to punch out my hearts first. So I'm just using a heart punch that has multiple sizes and punching them out of the watercolor that I did. And they turn out so pretty. You can see compared to the photos, they're a little bit bright, but I'm going to remedy that later. And I'm punching some out of this circle that I punched as well. So I've got a bunch of hearts. They're very, very bright. They could work, but I am going to, now the end of this video cuts out, so I ha I will explain a couple more things at the end during the close-up photos. And I think one of the things that cuts out is the way that I end up making these hearts a little less vibrant. The vibrant color is awesome, but because the other papers are not quite as vibrant, I wanted to tone them down just a little bit. And so I used some Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink in old paper and just rubbed it over it. And it just gives it a slightly more muted look. And you'll see that in the close-up photos at the end. So here I've got my washi tape and it's just on some white cardstock. And I'm going to take my circle punches and punch those out. So I've got a two and a half inch punch and then I'm also using a, I think it's one and three quarters or one and a half inch. Uh, and then I'm using a one inch punch as well. I will not end up using the one inch punched circles. I'm gonna save those for something else, but the other two sizes I do use. And in fact, I go back and punch out some more to use because of the way that I end up wanting to design this. So I moved my photo up to the top and I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to use the circles in conjunction with the photo. So at this point I'm thinking it would be nice to have some sort of diagonal design where I um, have some of those circles up at the top by the photo and then have them kind of dr drift down to the bottom right. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now and you can see me kind of arranging them in that way, just kind of in a random pattern going down the page, but I am struggling with the way that this is looking and I'm not loving what, I don't know if my mojo was lost or what, but I was struggling with the way that this was looking. And so I thought maybe I just need to do a vertical line of these circles. And I tried that and that would have worked probably too, but I didn't love it. And so I'm gonna move around and place things again where, I just, I don't know. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I do for sure know I want to make a feature of that circle that's next to the left of my photo because that flower is so pretty. So I want to make sure it stays on show. 
So I'm still kind of playing around with the idea of doing a vertical line of the circles. And, you know, it. I think it looks pretty good, but um, I'm not completely happy with it. So again, I'm going to play around and move things and try to figure out what's going on and why I'm not loving it. So I'm just moving and moving and moving things around. And I think that this looks actually really pretty. And maybe if I just... I don't know. I think that this could have worked, what I've got going on right here, where they're kind of going off the edge of the left side. Um, I kind of like that. And so this is the direction I'm going to take it for a few minutes um, because I, I'm i getting happier with it. Um, and so I think that works well. I think if you didn't want to punch out the circles, you could just put a strip of the washi tape along the side of your layout, and that would be pretty too. But I was thinking here that I wanted some more larger, large circles. And so I am uh, ripping some more tape and I'm punching out specific uh, circles that I want, like that flower that I just punched out that I thought was pretty. And so I'm, I'm getting a little bit more into what I'm liking. So I played with it a lot more off camera because I was just having a hard time. And I kind of decided that I loved the way that this looked as kind of a, if I arranged the circles in a line kind of in a brick pattern so I'm going to do the four I'm going to do four large circles and then three smaller circles beneath it on both top and bottom of the photo and I really like that design uh, it's more linear but it also lets the flowers really shine and so I'm pretty happy with that sorry if you could hear my my chair squeaking there it's pretty squeaky anyway so I'm I'm a lot lot happier with the way this is looking and this is the direction that the final layout will end up is with the with the circles above and below the photo. And then I just kind of ripped some pieces of washi tape off as I needed them for different uh, parts of the flower and I punched what I needed or what I thought looked nice and um, arranged that and I think it looks really pretty. So I'm using my T-square ruler to make sure I get these lined up properly. And I thought about just taking the washi tape off of the circles and putting it directly on the background, but I kind of liked that you could see the tiniest bit of a shadow underneath the cardstock from the circle, and it really made the circle stand out. So I am going to keep it on, but I think I would try this again with the washi tape punched and then just peeled off of the circle. So I would definitely suggest trying that if, if uh, you try a similar layout. So I'm just trying to get these evenly spaced, which is the hard part, right? And um, I don't want them to be too spaced apart, but I want them to be, to have enough room for the uh, circles above. So now I've got those all glued down and I am going to attach my photo. I decided to put my photo up on some foam. I just wanted it to stand up off of the background and so I'm just adding some foam behind it. And I like to get the fun foam that has adhesive on one side and then the other side is, you just add adhesive to the other side. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm using black and brown. You won't see it, so it doesn't matter what colors I really use. Um, I'm making sure that I'm not using any, any of it that will show through where the vellum is because I don't want you to be able to see the adhesive through the vellum. And uh, then I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of it, lots of it. <laughs> and I'm struggling a little bit with my ad adhesive roller here, but ended up getting what I needed. And then I'll just adhere it in the center. And so I really, really love the way that this design turned out. So I've decided to do my title where I have the letters above and I decided to find these letters that spelled out the word friends. And then I'm going to have those stamped letters on the bottom of my photo. And the word friends didn't quite match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color them. And I'm playing around with whether I want them to overlap on the photo or not. But in the end, I do have them overlap. Now this is where my video is going to cut out in just a minute here. But basically, I'm going to take some alcohol markers and color in the word friends. And make it a little bit more of a purpley color and here that's the last thing that you can see me doing there and then i went ahead and drew some messy circles around some of those uh, punched circles and i drew some doodly lines too i added 
the names of everybody in the photos underneath the subtitle. And then I also stamped out a couple of words um, on some watercolored pieces and the date and added my journaling. And then for a final touch, my little hearts that I mentioned, I, I made them match a little bit better by using some distress ink in old paper. I, find, I finished it off with just a little bit of Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine, and I'm really happy with the way this came out. Uh, I also added a border on the left-hand side. That washi tape is just gorgeous. If you want to see more, be sure to head over to altanew.com, and I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you again soon.